Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rex Butler, professor of church history, recently retired from New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. My wife Margie and I now live in Tomball, Texas. We live only a mile and a half away from our grandkids, and that's what retirement is about, being close to family. But still, I'm grateful for this opportunity to teach History of Christianity, Reformation to Modern, and I'm grateful that you have joined me for this study. I want to review the syllabus so that you can understand the uh, requirements and expectations. But first, I want you to set aside any preconceived ideas that you may have about history. So many of my students say that, oh, they thought that history was boring until they took my class. Well, I have fun as a church historian. I get to dress up as historical characters like St. Nicholas and Martin Luther, literary characters like Gandalf and Professor Dumbledore, and even one of my favorite movie characters, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I hope you see that we're going to have a good time together this semester. Let me share my contact information with you. Uh, my email address is on your syllabus that is posted online. And the very best way that you can contact me is through email, either directly to my account or through Canvas. Either way, uh, I can keep track of our correspondence and respond to you promptly. If you need uh, to call me, please do. My cell number also is, uh, is on the syllabus and here on screen. You'll need to call and leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, let's talk about the required textbooks for our class. Uh, the first one is Justo Gonzalez, The Story of Christianity, Volume 2, Reformation to the Present Day. You will enjoy Justo Gonzalez. He is so readable. His textbook is one of the reasons why I fell in love with church history, and I hope that you will enjoy it as well. There are uh, at least two editions of uh, this textbook. You can use the older one or the current one. The other textbook is a document of the Christian church. This is a collection of readings uh, written by the primary sources like Martin Luther, John Calvin, uh, many of the uh, creeds and confessions and so on. Uh, and again, there are multiple editions. You can use anyone that is accessible uh, to you. I have Try to uh, arrange the reading schedule so that uh, it's uh, arranged by titles rather than by page numbers so that any edition will work for you. There will be additional required reading from primary sources that are available for free on the Internet. And all of this is uh, listed on your uh, syllabus and course schedule. All right, uh, we use the Canvas learning platform uh, for our online class. And uh, if you're seeing this video, you're already on Canvas, right? Uh, you've been automatically uh, enrolled. Uh, so uh, you'll want to use Canvas and you'll find many helpful features there. First of all, uh, the uh, it's arranged in modules, and the first module says, Welcome, begin here. And so do that. Begin right there uh, at that module. You'll find a welcome from Dr. Jamie Dew, our president. Uh, what a fine person he is. You will enjoy getting to know him even from a distance. So watch 
his video, and then you'll find a video from your professor. You'll see that I developed this course, and so I provide an introduction uh, to the course for you. And then, of course, this video is an explanation of your syllabus. You'll also find the syllabus and course schedule, which I hope that you will print out and keep close by because you'll need all of those dates uh, in order to keep up with the class. All right, you'll also find a variety of course resources, the style guide, access to the library, uh, news from the seminary, and also an access to the writing center that will help you as you write your assignments. All right, the first thing that I would like for you to do is uh, go to uh, uh, the introduction and introduce yourself. Uh, if you would, please tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you, where you live, uh, what's your background, what is your major, and especially what is your ministry goal. Talk about uh, any church where you serve or the job that you have. Do you have family? Uh, talk about your hobbies and things that you like to do. Anything that you would like to share, I would like to read. And also, your fellow classmates would like to get to know you better. I love pictures. Pictures help me to connect with my distant students. Well, I've already uh, posted some pictures and information about myself maybe more than you want to know. Uh, I've got a picture of myself, my family, my sweet wife, uh, and my grandkids. And of course, you want to see pictures of my grandkids. All right, so please introduce yourself uh, early on this semester. All right, uh, there are uh, course modules, as I've already said, and you'll want to follow them uh, week by week. Every week, there'll be a to-do list where you can find out what it is you need to do that week. Of course, the video lectures are there. That's the heart of the course. And I go through the PowerPoints and uh, read between the lines for you. There'll be a number of bonus features like other videos, pictures from my travels, charts and maps, so on and so forth. Uh, on uh, Canvas, you will uh, report your weekly reading. You'll uh, provide your application points. And then, of course, there are unit exams to take and also study guides. All of this is on Canvas, and you can follow along uh, through the course modules. All right, let's talk about the unit exams. There are six of them, and you see the dates listed there, but of course they are on your syllabus and course schedule. You need to mark them very carefully because you do not want to miss each deadline because at midnight, at the end of each date, your unit exam is due, and at midnight, the link will disappear and you will not have an opportunity to take that exam. So mark your calendar and keep up with it on a regular basis. Every unit uh, test is due on a Monday and I will send out an email every Monday to remind you about the, the, uh, the assignments that are due that day. All right, as I said, there are six unit exams. You take them online. Each one lasts 25 minutes. Uh, don't open it up until you're ready to take the test. Uh, and then it's going to shut down when the time expires. Now listen to me. Each test is closed book, closed note, open memory. So please, you're on the honor system, uh, but take these tests uh, based on what you have learned and remembered. Now, again, this is very important. The base value of every exam is 25 points. But every exam has two or three or four bonus questions, which can increase the value of each exam. Remember, the name bonus comes from the Latin word meaning good. And so these bonus questions are good for you because they give you an opportunity to earn some extra points. All right. Now, again, this is important. The lowest exam grade will be dropped. This is good news. If you forget 
to take a test, it's okay. <laughs> if you only do it once, uh, you won't lose any points. If you have computer problems, if you go out of town uh, to lead a D now or a revival, if you go to grandma's house and she's got dial up, that doesn't happen much anymore. Uh, sometimes the uh, older folks have the best technology. But at any rate, uh, if for any reason you cannot take a, an exam, it's going to be okay. Now, at the end of the semester, if you have taken all five exams and are satisfied with those five exam scores, then you can exempt yourself from the sixth. OK, and so I've designed this class uh, so that you can uh, do well on these tests. And uh, I hope that you'll remember again, I'll be reminding you every Monday. All right. Reading reports are also an important part of your semester and you'll report your reading every week. OK, so if you look at your course schedule, You'll see on the right the readings that are expected for each week. So you get through those. If you read 100%, that's great because then you can just click 100%. You're going to get 2.5 points every week. If you didn't read quite everything, well, that's 80%. And so that's two points. If it's just over half, it's a point and a half, so on and so forth. All right, but please do your reading every week because uh, you can't learn everything that I want you to know about church history just from the PowerPoints and video lectures. So please do your reading also. At the end of the semester, uh, if you have read everything for the for the semester you can uh, complete your bonus reading report and get five bonus points added to your score so this is very important this means that if for some reason or another you missed reading everything one week or another you can go back and catch up and then at the end of the semester you can tell me you've read everything and so i'll give you five points all right so that's unit exams and reading reports. Let's talk about the application points. One thing that I want you to do uh, as you study church history is to apply it uh, to your life and ministry. And so every unit, I'm going to ask you to give thought to what it is that you are learning and then write out an application point. Uh, this could be a sermon illustration, uh, something that happened in your studies that you can tell other people about uh, and enhance your preaching and teaching. Uh, this could be something that you learned about your ministry, what to do or what not to do, or is there a devotional lesson that you learn that enhances your Christian life? Remember, sometimes lessons can be negative. That is, you can learn what not to do. All right, so after studying the, uh, the reading, the lecture material, uh, any bonus features, uh, you can go to uh, the application point and create your own thread. This thread should be 150 to 300 words, so I want it to be substantive, not just one sentence or two. Uh, you will have an opportunity to respond to each other, but that is not required uh, to complete your application point. Uh, each point is each application point is worth 15 points total. All right. And so again, based on your study, uh, provide the class with a sermon illustration, an insight, uh, or an experience that has uh, improved your devotion uh, to Christ. All right. You'll see all of this laid out in your syllabus. All right. Uh, each application point is worth 15 points, and the schedule is as follows. Again, it's outlined in your syllabus and your uh, course schedule. You'll find often that your application will be due in the middle of a unit, and so you won't have had an opportunity to read everything in that unit, but just uh, respond to what you have learned so far, okay? I have so many assignments packed in, it's hard to uh, uh, put the application point at the end of every unit. All right, here are your written assignments. You have two book reviews. One will be a review of a biography, 
The other will be a review of a book about a movement or event, a, little, a broader topic. All right. So uh, uh, you will read and review a biography of a subject that's located within the parameters of the Reformation in modern eras of the church. All right. Uh, so not Augustine, not Aquinas, sorry, uh, but Luther, Calvin, so on and so forth. Again, uh, there are biographies included in the selected uh, bibliography at the end of your syllabus. Now, if you choose one of the books uh, listed in the syllabus, feel free to go ahead, read it, review it, write it, and submit it, okay? If you want to choose a book not listed, well, then you have to get permission from the professor. The book review of the biography is due fairly early in the semester, uh, February the 24th. All right, each book review should be between six to eight double-spaced typewritten pages. It should contain a bibliographical entry at the top of the first text page of the review. All right, it's going to have uh, author, last name first, uh, title of the book, in parentheses, publication information. That'll go at the very top uh, two or three lines. All right, then you will open your book review with a biographical sketch of the author. Very brief. Uh, I don't want to uh, don't want you to spend a lot of time or space there, but just write about the author, uh, where he came from, what is his his or her uh, background. Uh, and uh, so uh, just give us a biographical sketch, very brief. And then the bulk of your uh, book review will be a summary of the contents of the entire book. All right. If uh, we cannot see that you've read the entire book, you'll have points deducted. But then the very end of the uh, book review needs to include an application point. Uh, so again, I want you to, to tell me how did you apply what you read to your personal life and ministry. Again, sermon illustration, uh, ministry, uh, teaching, uh, personal devotion, that sort of thing. All right. Every book review needs a cover page, but that cover page does not count toward your six to eight pages uh, in length. All right. So the second book review, as I said, uh, is of a movement or event, a broader topic. Uh, again, books are listed uh, in the selected bibliography. Other books are allowed with my permission. The second book review is due on April 14th. The parameters are the same as the first book review. Okie doke. These are your only uh, two major written assignments, two book reviews. But I hope that by reading these two books that you will be able to focus in on a topic that is uh, important and interesting to you. All right. Turnitin is a service on Canvas. When you submit your book review, it will automatically be evaluated. Turnitin will look at the database and see how much of what you wrote they're going to find elsewhere. So this means that you've uh, uh, quoted it, uh, copied it, uh, that sort of thing. You need to be sure that if that material is highlighted, be sure that you have cited it properly with quotation marks uh, and, uh, and, a, and a citation. You may need to put more of your paper in your own words, because even though you are reviewing a book, I don't need to know, uh, I don't need you to quote the book. I need you to read the book, understand it, and then uh, review it and uh, tell me what you have learned. Okay. All right, and The Right Stuff is the name of our writing center, and they will help you uh, do a better job of writing, not only on this paper, but all the papers that you turn in at the seminary. The catch is that you have to submit it at least three working days ahead of the due date to give them time to review it and get back to you. But you will have a writing coach that will respond uh, to you, review the paper, and help you to improve your writing before the paper is submitted. And so working with a writing center should help you improve your academic writing and get a better grade along the way. All right.
I've got to put on my ugly face and talk to you about penalties if you do not meet all of the expectations of this class. First of all, unit exams and reading reports must be submitted by the deadline. Okay, after the deadline, unit exams and reading reports will not be reopened. Okay, let me say that again. If you miss an a, a test or a reading report uh, before the due date, you will not have an opportunity to retake that. Okay, do not ask because the answer will be no. Instead, I will be reminding you every week what is due and you will be responsible for remembering uh, your assignments. All right, application points. Uh, failure to participate adequately, that is, if it's not long enough or if it does not meet the criteria that I've asked for, uh, if you don't do it in a timely manner, that's going to affect the amount of points awarded. And those 15 point application points will add up quickly. All right. Uh, so tardiness. I don't know about other professors, but I am very strict about getting papers in on time. And so if you are late with uh, uh, any project assignment, uh, like either of the book reviews, there will be a 10% penalty if it is submitted after the deadline. That's six points, okay? Because it's a 60 point assignment. If it's more than five days late, it's doubled. And so you'll lose 20% or 12 points. That's more than a letter grade. And if it's more than a week due, I don't even like to talk about how severe that penalty will be. And so please get your work in on time. All right, let's talk about plagiarism. Uh, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary has a high standard of personal integrity expected of our students. And so you should not be copying anybody else's work and presenting it as your own. These days, uh, with AI technology, uh, unfortunately, we find that students are uh, actually letting the computer write their papers. No, that is not a quality learning experience, and it is cheating. So, uh, we don't allow that, and turn it in will let me know if you have plagiarized or you if you have used AI. And so, there will be uh, severe penalties, failing the assignment or failing the class. All right. So please uh, be honest uh, with your work. All right. Now I can put my happy face back on again, and let's talk about uh, how you will be graded in this class. All right. Uh, I've already talked about points that are being awarded. So your reading, if you complete all of your reading, that's a basic 30 points. Remember, you can get five extra points if you read everything for the semester. With the exams, five uh, will be uh, counted toward your final grade. Uh, each one has a base value of 25 points, but if you answer uh, these bonus questions, you can add points there as well. All right, each book review is 60 points, and then if you uh, complete your application points uh, in a timely manner, if if you're adequate there, then that's 90 points uh, with uh, 6 times 15 points for each application point. So, total of 365 points with the possibility even of more points than that. And so the grading scale is based on the points that you earn with your assignments. So 340 to 365 points is an A. 310 points to 339 points, that's a B, and so on. Uh, now, let me make a prediction. This I can tell you this based on all the classes that I've taught uh, in the last 17 years. Over half of you are going to make A's. Out of the other half, most are going to make B's. There'll be a few C's and D's, but if you want to fail my class, you have to work very hard at it. All right? Uh, to fail my class means that you haven't turned in your assignments, or they're late, uh, or you have 
uh, plagiarized or uh, committed some other infraction, okay, uh, if you do the work, you will make the grade, okay? And so this class is very doable. There are many elements uh, included in the class uh, syllabus, but each one uh, is, is geared toward your learning the maximum amount of information, quality information about church history, and then presenting it in a way that is helpful and meaningful to you. All right, I uh, will just mention the emergency plan. Uh, in the spring, we fortunately are out of, uh, out of the hurricane season, but there are other emergencies. And if, if there's ever uh, a need for the seminary to close down, uh, you can go to the seminary website, nobts.edu, for information about the seminary. Uh, you can check Canvas for instructions related to this particular class. All right, and so that wraps up our review of uh, the syllabus for History of Christianity, Reformation to Modern. And so uh, here I am uh, with some of my Reformation buddies. All right, this photo was taken on a trip that I made to Wittenberg, uh, Germany uh, during 2017 for Reformation 500. What a great tour that was. You will see some photos and some videos that, uh, that I took on that trip. I hope it will enhance uh, your study of this period of church history. All right, thanks for following along. Thanks for being a part of my class. Uh, if I can help, uh, please reach out to me. I am here for you, and I want this to be a wonderful experience. So God bless you. Let's have a great semester.